Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Dylan's New Nightmare, a Nightmare on Elm Street fan film which was published on YouTube a couple of months ago. Dylan's New Nightmare is a short film written and directed by Cecil Laird. Laird hails from the Horror Show channel on YouTube, which he's been uploading to for nearly a decade now. For Dylan's New Nightmare, Laird paired up with Vincent DeSanti of Womp Stomp Films, who made Never Hike Alone, Never Hike in the Snow, and the just-released Never Hike Alone 2. All the Never Hikes are quality films that inspired Laird and Dylan's new nightmare follows in their footsteps. It's well made, and seems like production was a positive experience. It was like getting to play every day. As its name implies, this is a sequel to Wes Craven's New Nightmare, the innovative seventh nightmare film that saw the franchise's creator return for a meta story. In it, Craven and the franchise actors play themselves, and the dream demon attacking them is an evil entity who takes on the appearance of Freddy Krueger, effectively bringing the character into the real world. Dylan's New Nightmare also takes place in the real world. Laird says that when the Freddy entity exploded, it went into Dylan's body. Now, nearly three decades later, it's grown strong enough from Dylan's nightmare to enter the real world again. I love Wes Craven's New Nightmare and think it's one of the best films in the series, and Dylan's New Nightmare is a worthy follow-up, especially since it sees the return of Miko Hughes, who played Heather Langenkamp's fictional son Dylan when he was eight years old. He put in a great performance there, just like he did as a friggin' three-year-old in the OG Pet Cemetery. Now Hughes is all grown up and gets to play a tortured man with a traumatic past. He's great at it! I would've loved to see Heather Langenkamp return as well, but at least the cast includes a couple of other horror vets. It's also got a great performer as Freddy, Dave McRae. It's not an original take on the character, he's just doing Robert England, but damn, does he do it well. <laughs> Dylan's New Nightmare is a tad bit talky and definitely leaves you wanting more, but for 25 minutes, it's a way to sit back and enjoy a well-prepared little taste of our favorite dream demon. Good thing, us fans have been hungry for too long. How many kills can it- And action! There's no way I'm gonna like what I find, is there? All right, you're feeling killy, you're feeling county. Uh, what are you guys doing? Oh, James, uh, we're actually just working on our fan film. Alive Meat, The Rise of the Kill Count. We've even got some celebrity cameos like Robert England. Zorn, that's a picture. Uh-uh-uh, correction, a signed picture from today's sponsor, Mintage. Oh, I know Mintage. I even met one of their co-founders, Adam, at Silver Scream Con. He's a real nice guy. He even said that he'd send me some stuff from their extensive catalog of memorabilia, hand-signed by horror icons like Robert England and Jeffrey Combs, Shelley Duvall, Catherine O'Hara, Tony Todd, Skeet Ulrich, and David Howard Thornton. Yeah, I'm shutting this all down. No! Oh, man. Can we at least keep some autographs? Absolutely not. No. But you can get your own autographed photos, masks, weapons, or even Funko Pops on their site. Plus, while horror is their bread and butter, they do have tons of general pop culture signatures too, including franchises like Star Wars, Star Trek, and Lord of the Rings, music artists like Ice Nine Kills, and more. And when they have an upcoming signing, you can even send in your own items to get them autographed through their pre-sales. <gasps> I could get my Bakugo signed. I, I mean, maybe. Yeah, you never know what surprises they have in store. They even periodically release mystery boxes that sell out fast. Just keep an eye out on their socials or join their email list to stay up to date with everything going on. He's my son. You can stock up on your own signed memorabilia, all certified by leading authenticators Beckett or JSA, for $5 off by going to MintageAuthentics.com or clicking the link in the description and using promo code DEADMEAT. So Ben's playing me, huh? Yeah, people have mistaken him for you before, so I figured, why the hell not? That's true. I don't see it. How many kills can an evil entity secure in the runtime of a sitcom episode? Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins in Los Angeles, where a jovial entity waits to make his move. We're at an audition with a bunch of Eric Rowans and one Dylan Porter sitting all by his lonesome. He's reading for Hatchet 5, Crowley's Revenge, the fictional fifth installment of the beloved Hatchet series by Adam Green. I love the dialogue here ribbing at the filmmaker. Who even writes this shit now? Certainly not Adam. He's just cashing checks at this point. The casting director remembers Dylan's dad, Chase, famous makeup effects artist. Well, formerly famous makeup effects artist. Until the entity killed him, of course. I don't remember any of that, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm 
Sorry. The casting director is played by Ron Sloan, who was in my favorite Friday, part five, as the obnoxious dirt bike riding junior. He's looking great here. Dylan does the audition, allowing Miko Hughes to act like an actor. This was his first time acting in decades. Filmmaker Cecil Laird sought him out and spent 7,000 bucks of his own to make a teaser trailer that showcased his filmmaking and Hughes' acting. It went over so well, they raised $40,000 for Dylan's new nightmare on Indiegogo. Too bad this casting director finds Dylan's acting choices funny. <laughs> Damn, that's a good Freddy laugh. What do you two think? Oh, great. Glad we're all in agreement here. The assistant scene readers go off book and onto the count, turning Dylan's dream into a nightmare. Oh, hey, just like the title. The evil entity once again takes on the appearance of Freddy Krueger as he mocks Dylan's attempts to escape this nightmare. Wake up. <laughs> Freddy's actor Dave McRae is a voice actor and YouTuber who's been doing Freddy stuff on his channel for a while now. Laird originally cast a guy who played Freddy in sketches on the Horror Show channel, but when it came to a full-fledged production, the guy opted out so a real performer could take his place. McRae stepped in, and the first pictures of him as Freddy helped them raise an additional $13,000 for the project. Dylan tries to escape, but Freddy intersects him by walking down the wall. Then he asks Dylan to play his favorite game. Skin the cat! Great reference to the scene in New Night Nightmare, where Freddy killed that poor babysitter, Julie. Ever play Skin the Cat? Dylan wakes up in an awesome shop, and then Miko Hughes shows us how much he cares about his physical health. Great job there, dude! He also takes care of his mental health, since he's currently seeing a therapist named Dr. Silby. She's played by Cynthia Kanya, who was in Friday 6 Jason Lives as the picnicking gal who got double impaled on a motorcycle. Dr. Silby asks after Dylan's mom, but he says he hasn't bothered to call her lately. The answer's always the same. She's not well enough to come to the phone. Damn, y'all sticking Heather in a psych ward? Giving her the Karen Barkley treatment? Unacceptable. The doctor blames Heather's unraveling and work in horror films as the root cause of Dylan's troubles. Dylan mentions his dream, complete with loud jumpy jump scares, but doesn't divulge the whole evil entity slash Freddy Krueger part. Also doesn't mention when he has a vision of Freddy spooning the doc. He leaves her and drives along the coast to a song called Running From This Dream Warrior, a clever mashup of two famous songs from the franchise. The music is Dokken's Dream Warrior song, which was used in part three, while the lyrics are from Tuesday Night's Running From This Nightmare, which played over the opening credits of Nightmare. 4. I'd love to play you a clip, but you know how music copyright goes. In his coldly lit kitchen slash LaCroix Spawn concept, Dylan finally calls his mom at the Burbank Psychiatric Ward. He's put on hold where he hears heavy Freddy breathing and some laughing. <laughs> Careful picking that thing up, dude. Might end up with a tongue in your ear. When the nurse returns, she says the same old thing. His mom's not in the condition to talk to him right now. Might as well get some rest then. Sleep tight, Dylan. Don't let the Fred bugs bite. Aw, oh, man, shit's about to get bitey, huh? The entity arises in our world and pulls out his wardrobe from the monster world in Little Monsters. He suits himself up in his finest dark man attire and laughs at Dylan's inadequate defense system. You can't catch me. But the entity's not interested in Dylan just yet. Instead, he leaves and heads to the home of Dr. Silby, who's currently logging her thoughts about Dylan. To think all these delusions brought on by a cheap horror movie. Her recorder freaks out, and pretty soon she's hearing Freddy with his own take on a Jump Rope Girls classic. <laughs> Aw, you can't be too scared of Freddy, Doc. I mean, you've got him on your log screen. You're clearly a big fan. In fact, maybe you can even get his autograph now that he's standing right behind you! The Freddy swipes, severing her arm. And I love the thin slices that are caused by the space between his finger knives. I also enjoy Freddy's sneering one-liners. What's up, Doc? It's back to the same dark mocking humor that marked the first couple of films. Laird wanted his Freddy to be mean again. Visually, this Freddy takes mostly from the new nightmare entity, like with the olive green fedora and the sweater that has green cuffs instead of the traditional red. But this Freddy also has diamond pupils like Demon Freddy from Freddy vs. Jason, and his makeup design is mostly taken from part two, especially the sunken eyes. The Freddy mask was sculpted by Mike Rotella, or Mikey Rotz, who also sculpted the creature at the end of Smile. Yeah, that thing was practical. The mask was then applied by effects artist Nora Hewitt, who's worked on The Predator, The Nun, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Since Dylan's new nightmare uses a licensed character, it couldn't make any profit, so Laird put every penny into production. It was very smart to spend those funds on an experienced, high-quality crew. For instance, editor Tom Newell also worked on Brand New Cherry Flavor and the Chucky TV series. Finally, Freddy's glove here was made by Mark Phillips from Nightmares Unlimited, a place that sells replica gloves and other stuff like Phantasm Sentinels. It mixes the new Nightmare-style claws with the classic glove, using a black backplate and copper wire veins. The entity confirms that it's an entity, not actually Freddy Krueger. Freddy? 
Sometimes. With that exploration of self complete, Freddy cancels his future sessions and kills the doc with an overhead finger knife stab to the chest. Good stuff. The next morning, Dylan awakens to an earthquake, which of course was a recurring thing in Wes Craven's new nightmare. He finds his doctor's bloody pen next to a picture of him and his mom, which is really a picture of young him and Heather Langenkamp, so they must have gotten permission to use her likeness. Ooh, and they got permission to use Rex's likeness too? Good thing, Rex usually charges an arm and a leg for that. Well, I guess his arms wouldn't cost as much, huh? This Rex was actually actually the screen-used prop from New Nightmare that Miko Hughes still had after all these years. For the parts where it had to bleed, they bought cheaper Rex pillows online, which Laird's co-host producer Dave spent all night prepping with blood tubes. The movie ends with Dylan getting a phone call from his mom. Really? It brings a tear to his eye, even though that's not really Heather Langenkamp's voice. It's actress Deandra Lazor, aka at Sassy Sledgehammer, who previously played Nancy Thompson in another fan film called Don't Fall Asleep. She also played herself playing Nancy in New Tale, The Demon of Elm Street. The credits, which run almost eight minutes thanks to the long list of Indiegogo backers, keeps things interesting with behind the scenes pictures and another original song. New Nightmare by The Wicked One is a rap song in the vein of the Fat Boys' Are You Ready for Freddy, which played over the end credits of Nightmare 4. Good company to be in. How many of Dylan's new nightmares came true thanks to Freddy? Let's find out and get to the numbers, but I think I'll take the long way this time. There were three kills in Dylan's new nightmare, consisting of two women and one man. That's not a common pie chart right there, since we've only seen it three times before on this show. Although, coincidentally, we just saw it last week in Talk To Me. With a runtime of 35 minutes, eight of which were credits, we technically had a kill on average just under every 12 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Dr. Silby, entirely because of those flesh slices. I can't believe we've never seen that before. Of course the finger knives would cause slices. Why haven't we seen that before? And I won't give a doll machete for lamest kill, since the other two deaths were shocking and violent, and we don't need to have a loser by default. And that's it! Dylan's new Nightmare was released on YouTube in 2023, and it's a worthy watch for Nightmare fans who have been in a frickin' drought. And in case you were wondering, Laird has already mentioned the possibility of his Freddy and the Never Hike Alone Jason facing off one day. That'd be cool. Until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for watching The Kill Count for Dylan's New Nightmare. Great work, Cecil, you did awesome, man. I love seeing YouTubers create cool shit like this. Hope everyone enjoyed October. Like I said before, I know it wasn't the usual massive horror hits we cover, but we did what we could, and hopefully a few of you found a few new interests thanks to what we covered. Also, I have to watch Molly right now because Chelsea is doing a voiceover class, and Molly gets upset if she is not always actively being held or on your lap. <laughs> Isn't that right, you little? Velcro baby. <laughs> Molly and I want to thank some patrons like Shane Jones, Alex Hernandez, Alex Riggs, Alex Zapian, geez, Alex Army, Dennis Ramirez, CB, Gamers Playland, and Original Username. Thanks everyone. Be good people.